Hello everyone, welcome to the Red Men TV. It's Wednesday, the 17th of April, the day before something special happens in Europe. I'm Chris Page, I'm here with your nonsense transfer rumours for the day. Um, and I'm going to lead with the first story. And the first story is quite simply about Victor Osman. Uh, comment left... Um, without comments uh, below me, uh, which I think is quite interesting. Uh, no, seriously though, Liverpool have been tipped, tipped to sign Victor Osserman, um and replace Mo Salah. Notice how I left that one out. I can already see people were angry in the comments, but if I'd have gone with Liverpool to replace Mo Salah with Victor Osserman, you'd have been fuming at me, wouldn't you? Um, and it, it is, of course, our old friend, uh, Steve Nichol, former Red himself, uh, who has said, hang on a minute, the fact that Salah is going to be going, whether this year or next year, Osserman? I think he'd be fantastic for Liverpool. The middle of the park, we've just signed Alexi McAllister and Dominic Sobersly. Endo's turned out to be incredible. You need someone who'll run all day and give it to McAllister, Sobersly and Salah. Uh, Nickel uh, also claimed that landing Osman, who's helped Napoli win today, would mean that Darwin Nunes would be forced to play in a wider role. Okay, listen, it's a, it's a tip from a player who, or a, a man who used to play for Liverpool and now works in the media. It's not a transfer story. It's not a link in any way. Um, if you, I'm sorry if you thought it was. I, what I wanted to include it in today's news show for was because I actually think there's an interesting conversation around Liverpool's front three players rather than like the Victor Osman thing. That just leads me into being able to talk to you about what I want to talk about, to be honest. Um, it's not a transfer. It's not a transfer rumor. It's a guy's opinion. Yeah, you're right, uh, Darren. Um, okay, so let me talk about it then. The the front three. It's got me thinking, um, mainly around a new manager coming in, because you know there's been frustration with Darwin Nunes. I've been frustrated with him. A lot of people have been frustrated with him. It seems like a probably a fifty fifty split of people who just think. Yeah, we should keep him. And a, 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 a few, a 50% of us will be like, oh, he's frustrating me too much now. Now, straight off the back, what I really think is he's been really, really good for Liverpool so far this season. He has been incredibly frustrating at times as well. But the work rate, the ethic, the fact that he can sort of control a back line almost all on his own, press him all on his own, it's It's unbelievable. But what it gets me thinking is, I wonder whether a new manager coming in has the same sort of depth of feeling for him as Jürgen Klopp does. We know that Jürgen Klopp doesn't very often give up on footballers. We know that he always believes in them and believes that they're going to improve and believes in his coaches that they're going to improve those players. But it does make me wonder, if you're a new manager coming into Liverpool and you want to put your stamp on a side as well, would one, would one of the forward places be up for grabs? Because I think Mo Salah, obviously we know what he's been able to do at Liverpool. He's going to go down as one of the all-time greats at Liverpool Football Club, which is incredible when you consider how many great players we've had over the years. He's going to be easier top five Liverpool player of all time when he hangs up his boots. You've got Darwin Nunes in the centre. You've got Luis Diaz on the left-hand side. You've got Diogo Jota. You've got Cody Gakpo. They're the five lads that we've kind of ran with this season. Diaz, I think, is brilliant, but probably doesn't have as much end product as we were used to with with Sadio Mane. It's absolute pomp. Uh, Darwin Nunes has more end product probably than Roberto Firmino in most of his seasons, but frustrates the living daylight out of us. Uh, and Mo Salah is getting another year older and he's going to come up on contract talks at some point because his contract runs out at the end of next season. Those contracts that would ordinarily have already happened, I guess, if we had a new manager. My feeling is that Mo's probably hanging on to see what the training's like, whether he likes it, whether he believes in what the new manager is going to bring. Can he win those trophies and stuff at the absolute highest level? And that's fair play. He's allowed to think like that. Uh, what we see on the football pitch is, you know, a tenth of the time of what they do. You know, it's all about what goes on behind the, the, the sort of closed doors. And, you know, that's whether you enjoy your job or not, whether you like the training, uh, whether you like it, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, it's interesting. And then it gets me to, well, if you are putting a stamp on this, obviously, I think we know we probably need another defender. Um, I think we probably know we need another defensive midfielder or another, yeah, a, a defensive-minded midfielder, certainly. Um, would you be able to get a defender, 
maybe a left-sided centre-half type of defender. Obviously, Amarin's played three at the back. If it was him, for example, maybe you'd look at a left-sided centre-half. You'd probably want someone with a bit more legs than Endo long-term uh, and a younger player, of course. And then it's the front three players. Well, are you going to go out and replace Mo Salah? I don't know. Maybe the new manager would be like, I'd love a year to Mo Salah, you know. Scores bags of goals every season. That's almost guaranteed. And then you're down to Diaz and, and Nunes. And it's like, well, Diaz, it's really hard to replace um, Nunes. You can probably get more from a centre forward. So that's what it's kind of got me thinking. And I don't have an answer for you. I was just sort of ruminating this sort of theory. Um, so I'm interested to hear what you guys think in the in the comments section as well. Um because yeah, it, it it's just interesting to me, and you you naturally are almost after two defeats when you in your head you sort of resign to Liverpool being out of the Europa League, and you know after the defeat at the weekend you sort of resign to Manchester City winning the league. In some ways, you just start floating ahead. You can't when the football comes on. You've got to be a fan. You've got to absolutely you know support and believe and everything else. But in the in the sort of downtime, I am my mind's drifting to the future, and I can't help that. You know what I mean? So. Um, uh, Antan just says Nunes is not reliable. Salah is way better than Nunes. Um, Billy Codling, a completely different viewpoint. Nunes, 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 get behind Darwin, everyone. Um, so it, it is a split opinion, I suppose, isn't it? But I don't know. I just thought it was interesting. And as I say, the Victor Osman links, for what it's worth, he's not had a great season anyway. He's got 13 goals. He's got three assists in 20 so far this season. Darwin Nunes got 11 goals, 8 assists in 30. So it's pretty comparable, to be fair. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting, I thought. Anyway, um, oh, there's a comment here from, from somebody, uh, from Dave. Dave Nunes is a breath... No, his name's not Dave Nunes. Dave said, Nunes is a breath away from being unstoppable. The only thing holding him back is his coolness in front of goal. Question is, if that's something you can train or if it's instinct. And that that is... You, you, you're absolutely spot on, Dave, because you think that you can train that, but can you? Can you train pressure 70,000, 60,000 people in the stands really wanting the goal to go in? It's not easy to train those situations. And I don't think at last weekend the Palace he was particularly guilty of missing Gilted's opportunities. I do think the one that, he, that, that was an unbelievable save from Henderson was he did as well as he could there. Um, but he is young and you do think well if he does it his prime can he but like also it's like two years and you're like oh, if we just had someone who stuck the ball in the back of the net we'd be top of this league by a country mile um, but you do need to sort of um, you do need to sort of t either turn it around and give him time or I can't imagine a new manager would do that straight away, but it is interesting, I suppose, in the last sort of three games that Nunes has come off in all of them when you're chasing a goal and he's your 85 million striker. Um, I don't know, read into that what you will. Uh, okay, so we we'll move on to the next story. Um, oh, well, before we do, 811 YouTube says, I think Nunes' biggest issue is what, he fin what finish he chooses. He's got all of them in his locker, but mostly chooses wrong. That And that that's, I agree with that completely, to be honest with you. And I've said it myself on deep dives and, and stuff like that. I do believe that he just makes the wrong decision um, when it comes to the business end of the pitch most of the time. Um, but yeah. We are, we are where we are. I will move on then. Liverpool have had their 26-man uh, squad in training uh, before the Atalanta second leg. Um, the full squad, I suppose, is just... Sorry about that. Just a bit jarring, that, isn't it, when I just scroll down. The full squad is Alisson, Kelleher, Adrian Rozek, Van Dijk, Canate, Kwanzaa, Gomez, Alexander Arnold, Robertson, Tim Akash, Macarendo, Sobersley, Gravenberg, Elliot Jones, Bacetic, McConnell, Clark, Jota, Salah, Nunes, Diaz, Gakpo and Dans. So, great to see that Bacetic is still in training. Good to see that McConnell and Clark are still training with the first team. Good to see that Dans has travelled over there, certainly. Uh, if you had to pick a side for tomorrow night, who are you going with? Um, who starts in goal for you? I'm going to say that Alison Becker starts in goal. Um, I think it just makes sense to get him back into a rhythm. Um, as far as... The defence goes, I'd go with my centre-halves, I'd go Van Dijk and Canate. I'd probably be tempted to go Gomez 
and Robertson because I'm not sure that Alexander Arnold is ready for 90 minutes just yet. And I realise that I've changed that uh, from the podcast on Monday. I'd go McAllister, Soberslie Jones, and I'd go. Uh, not well, I say I'd go. I think he'll go. Salah, Jota Diaz. And Kenji has said uh, Gakpo, Elliot, Jota got to start, drop Nunes and Salah. Ooh, if we do get a goal early doors, though, if we do, whew, could be a special European night. And I hope that it really is. I really hope that it is, but I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not feeling full of confidence because, and this is what it comes down to, we need to stop conceding goals uh, and and especially early goals. Too many times this season we've given ourselves a mountain to climb and when you finish and drops off the edge of a cliff like it has in the last few weeks, then going a goal behind is curtains for you, isn't it? And, and we saw that at Crystal Palace, unfortunately. So, yeah. Difficult one. It's going to be tough. Um, get a goal and then just concentrate and keep in a clean sheet for a bit. Then maybe get another goal, then concentrate and clean in a clean sheet and then get another goal. And there you go. Extra time. The momentum's with you. And who knows what happens after that. And obviously, you know, we've been ha uh, handed a quiet sort of hope anyway because the other night, Monday night, Atalanta played, didn't they? Uh, against um, say our strugglers let me just see where it is it's Hellas Verona so I know that for sure uh, the Italians raced into a 2-0 lead after two minutes after just 18 minutes at home to struggle Hellas Verona only to again concede two goals in just four minutes after the break as they were held to a 2 all draw like if that's not giving you a little bit of confidence I don't know what is like they might have been resting place they probably were um, but still 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 come on let's go any goal, let's see what happens. Uh, and uh, Gucci Dub just says, clean sheet? What the fuck is that? Uh, Belter, mate. Belter. Um, Rachel Todd, uh, unfortunately, is not holding her breath for tomorrow night. Um, yeah, that's probably for the best. It's a, it's a hell of a long time to hold your breath for. Um, but also, I get the goals thing as well. So, yeah, difficult, difficult times. Um, okay, more news then. This one's an interesting one. I want your thoughts on this, actually, as well. Uh, Liverpool um, are hiring a new assistant sporting director and we're set to appoint David Woodfine in the role less than a year after he left the clubs. He was head of loans and partnerships, wasn't he? Um, so he'll be the assistant to uh, sporting director Richard Hughes. Um, Neil Jones said, Woodfine is to return to Liverpool as assistant sporting director to Richard Hughes. Woodfine left his role as the club's director of loan management last year, but he's been brought back as the Reds continue to revamp their football operations department. Uh, the returning staff member has a long-standing relationship with Michael Edwards, having worked previously alongside at Portsmouth, where Woodfine spent 2005 to 2010 as a performance analyst, then the head of performance. Okay, this is... Interesting because the first thing it made us all think about in the office today um, was what happened behind the scenes? Is this something that happened that meant that Michael Edwards left, that meant that Julian Ward left, that meant that David Woodfine left, that made that Ian Graham left? And what's changed such that a couple of them will be coming back? And you can't help but think, was there a problem with Jürgen Kopp? Like, and... This is, I think it's all, it, it, everyone knows, don't they, that, you know, over the last few years, Jürgen's garnered more and more control, and rightfully so. He's the man in charge of the football club. He's the, he is the face of the football club. He's the leader, he's the manager, and he wants more control, so you give him more control. But it does make you wonder, like, did he put people's noses out of joint? And I hope he didn't, um, but it wouldn't be surprised if he did, because that's what happens when you've got alpha males all over the building, isn't it? And one who is the true alpha male gets his way it would probably put people's sort of uh, nose out of joints. Now, hopefully, um, you know, it ain't, it ain't going to be a, a big deal to Jürgen, but it could be beneficial to Liverpool to bring these people back who know the football club inside and out, have good working relationships with one another, want to work with one another again. Um, so it's probably good, isn't it? Because I think that was the thing that sort of got Liverpool, along with Jürgen Klopp, the transfer savviness and the savviness in the market, not just buying players, or, but also like loaning players out and all that type of stuff. It's what helped let Liverpool to the top of the tree. Um, 
So getting the band back together uh, uh, could be a good thing for us. And, you know, obviously you still need that big manager. You still need the, the coaching staff and you still need everything else. But it does feel like Liverpool is sorting the back of house out again and probably going to a model where the manager probably can't get too much influence in the future because you set a precedent, don't you? It's funny, I was talking to, to somebody yesterday about, about something and, you know, we, we were chatting. I was like, look, it's great, but you're setting a precedent. This is the first conversation that you've had. If you give them it too cheap, actually, is in the conversation we were having, it's always going to be that way. And in the football regards, it's like, well, look, if you come in and you've got this level of control, you're never going to relinquish control. But if you never have the control, you might not ask for it. And I think that is Liverpool going to that more of that European uh, model. Um, Jay says, uh, George appointment showed Jürgen being in full control. Completely agree with that. Um, and Tony Wan Kenobi, great point. Remember, we collect friends, not trophies. Uh, well, Jürgen's job was to collect trophies, wasn't it? <laughs> um, uh, don't know. Um, okay. Let's have a look. I'm just looking through some of the comments. Uh, Face Southall, uh, friends of the show, of course. I don't think it was a clop issue. Maybe it was a greener grass not being all that. Most of come and go back to get better jobs. There is that point as well, Faye, it's a good point that they are all getting essentially um, bumped up the ladder slightly, and, and I'm sure that means a little bit more of that as well. Um, so you, probably, you, you could be right there as well. Yeah, but it's an interesting point. Thank you for that. Uh, we move on then. Uh, one thing I sort of glossed over a little bit um, during the 26-man squad news before was the fact that Connor Bradley uh, wasn't involved and obviously it's been revealed and you guys will probably know now that he's going to be out for around about three weeks with an ankle injury, uh, which is a little bit disappointing and, and just down here you can see it. Now Sky Sports report the defender will be out for up to three weeks after undergoing scans on an ankle, which showed the issue was not as bad as first the feared, which is obviously great uh, news. I mean, Conor Bradley just, he broke onto the, onto the scene so quickly and his star rose so fast. It was unbelievable, wasn't it? And like, I'm so disappointed and to be quite honest, I don't have a fucking clue who he was until he started playing for all I knew was he was playing in League One last year and all that type of stuff. Uh, not really watched him, knew he'd done pretty well and stuff like that. Didn't really think he'd do very well for us this year. Just don't see that the League One to Premier League to Europa League step up and Cup Finals is is something you see very often. Um, proved everyone that he's proved to everyone that he's absolutely ready for this, uh, and he's been absolutely brilliant, hasn't he? Got a comment in here. Uh, one made me laugh anyway. Thank you, Sam. Uh, when's the only fans coming? It already is. It exists. Um, it doesn't really, to be honest with you, but I don't think it's ever going to happen. Um, right. Okay. Um, Tony Phillips says Edwards needs curbing on paying agents fees. It's the disgrace. players employ agents, not clubs. Yeah. Was it something like 30 million roundabout that Liverpool paid? Nowhere near the astronomical 75 million of Chelsea paying to agents, but it was a big old figure, wasn't it? Um, yeah. <sighs> Um, Dr Jenkins says awesome so we're okay with the transfer committee as well getting the coaching first try to be grumpy on walk alone Chrissy um, hey mate no I'm with you it wasn't really a transfer room it was just more of a, a, an in for me to chat about the front three more than anything um, I do not think Liverpool will be making signings categorically I will say this I do not think Liverpool will be making signings until a manager is appointed I'm completely with you on that one it just doesn't seem to make any sense whatsoever that they would do that um, so yeah yeah, we'll carry on regardless. Um, oh, Tony Phillips saying 275 mil was paid to agents under Edwards from 2014 to 2021. It's a heck of a lot of money. It's a heck of a lot of money. Uh, okay, we're going to move on to the next story then. This is a disappointing one. I mean, it's not massively disappointing. It is a little bit disappointing, but you know. Um, Ruben Amarin Sport and... CP took a huge step. That's not the disappointing part. I'm actually really pleased for them. They're, they're closer. They've won the game in hand. They, they really have, um, you know, it's, it's theirs to lose right now. What is disappointing is he, he was speaking in his press conference a little bit afterwards, right? And he was asked, do you hear more fans saying that they want Sporting to be champions or for you to stay at the club? Both. Even my son asks me for both things, but the important thing is for Sporting to be champions. That's what the fans want. And that is what we fight for. So not only are Liverpool probably going to have to fight it out with some of the top clubs around Europe for the services of Ruben Amarin if he is on number one target this 
this summer to replace Jürgen Klopp but we are also going to have to fight his son but fight his son we will do we have no problems whatsoever in fighting Ruben Amarin's son to make sure that he doesn't stay in sporting and I'm happy with that Um. And just one little word on his son, little blurt. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I just. Um, okay, another manager talk that uh, doesn't look likely to, to sign for Liverpool now. And this is actual news, by the way. Well done. Well on me. Um, Liverpool new manager candidate in advance talk with rivals as the directors admit approach. And the pitch is the giveaway. It's Julian Nagelsmann. Um, so obviously we know that Bayern Munich are, are, are going to be looking for a manager at the end of the season. Thomas Tuchel, of course, is stepping down. Nagelsmann was sacked by Bayern Munich so that they could get him. They won the league title with them. Um, he's the manager of the German national team. We know it's a home Euros over in Germany in the summer. So he won't... And this, is, what, this is also it, though. I never thought he'd be in the conversation for Liverpool manager because the timing was all wrong. Unless you get him in before pre-season, and our pre-season starts when the Euros is going on, it made absolutely no sense to me. But apparently it makes sense to Bayern Munich who are interested in bringing him back and are now in advanced talks with Nagelsmann and his uh, people about becoming uh, the manager over in Bavaria once again. Uh, which is, I don't know whether he just feels he's got unfinished business or maybe it's just a, the best way for him to get back to the top uh, because they're willing to give him a chance. Whereas he's had a few spins now, hasn't he? And it's, it, it's worked, but has he... His star was so bright that maybe it's dimmed slightly, but Bayern Munich is a way to get that back up. Maybe it's the right sort of move for him and his career. Who knows? Uh, one final thing. Uh, this was coming out with the, the, the press conference after the Crystal Palace game, actually. Um, but it was Jürgen Klopp speaking, and he said... Uh, Klopp was asked if fatigue was finally settling in and the Anfield boss suggested that Endo McAllister might have played too many minutes in recent weeks. He goes on to say down here, did Watoro and Maka now play a little bit too much? Too, mu too much? Oh my God, I can't speak today. A little bit too much in the last few weeks. Maybe they were the two most used players, especially Maka. The other guys came back from injury. So I wonder whether this one means that we're not going to see both of them in the game. Um, I guess that McAllister's got to start, right? And does that mean they for the endo doesn't the manager thinks they're tired maybe it's time for a rest uh, and Jay just says there yeah endo defo needs a rest um, which yeah I think it's a, a, an agreed thing isn't it he looked tired he looked a little bit slower um, his passing wasn't as crisp at the weekend and stuff um, and Neil said uh, that would be smart resting them both but resting McAllister oof, tough 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 I don't know Anyway, uh, thank you so much for, for joining me uh, today. That has been the Daily News Show, uh, Wednesday the 17th of April. Um, sorry for baiting you in about Victor Osserman. Um Oh, Jay says, okay, 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 Jay says, uh, before you end the live, you're here for Champions League predictions for tonight. Okay, so, I think that Bayern will beat Arsenal. And I'm going to go 3-2 hell of a game and I think that Real Madrid I think that City beat Real Madrid although I do think that I think that Real Madrid can beat them and I think that's going to be a wild one as well I'm going to go I'm going to go 3-2 in both games and we're going to give that one to City and I'm going to give yeah 3-2 to Bayern Munich in the other game I do think it's City's trophy again unfortunately um what a shit way to end the life. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you next time. Tra. Hey, thank you so much for checking out the content today. If you want to get your name in and amongst these wonderful people, uh, then head to redmenplus.com. Join as a legend tier subscriber. You're going to get free merchandise, merchandise codes. You're going to get in our Discord and you're going to get your name at the end of YouTube videos. Yes, redmenplus.com, legend tier status.